Okay, so welcome back. Uh, is there any question that you thought about it uh, during the break? Um, anyway, just ask. So uh, I mentioned that I have some more uh, to say about this exception handling. So we saw one one way to handle these ex two types of exceptions um, that uh, we have this tripod, this code. Okay, so just to understand, this code might raise an exception. That's the whole story. And then if it raises a file not found error, we'll do this. If it raises a zero division error, we do this. Uh, and uh, for now, let's uh, comment this out because we would don't want to don't want to break, so we can continue the running the whole thing. So that's one one solution. Actually, I'm going to copy paste the whole thing, uh, so we have multiple solutions here in this same file. Uh, for this, how, however, however, I had to know what kind of uh, exceptions there might be. Okay, uh, and I might not be able to know upfront what kind of exceptions there are going to be. Um, and even now, I don't know if this in that code, I mean, this is a rather simple code, but uh, you can assume that that thing is going to be quite complex. That's why you are using the library of someone else. Okay, so you don't know what, I, what other kind of exceptions might happen there. Uh, so you might want to have a different strategy. And so what we can do is say, okay, I'm going to copy paste this whole thing now. And I comment this out. So you will have a version of it. But I could say, instead of this, I could say, actually, you know what? I don't even, okay. I could say this at the, to the end, except, ex, except, exception well and then i can say there was some uh, other exception it complains that i forgot the column okay so what happens now it, it, if this is a final found error I will do this. If this is a zero division error, we do this. In any other type of exception, we, we will do this. So what is this exception word? Let me open the browser and go to this, uh, the Python exception, uh, exception hierarchy error. Hello. It doesn't work now. What's the problem? That's what's the problem? Hmm. What if I use Google? Okay, Google works. Uh, DuckDuckGo seem to be have seems to have some problem. Okay, so <clears throat> I wanted to get to this point, to this uh, place. So here, this this is uh, the page about the uh, 3.12.3 version of Python, and you could actually switch to another version here uh, about exceptions and lots of lots of text. At the bottom of the page, there is the exception hierarchy. So Python, or the language, has a hierarchy of exceptions. Uh, here you can find this one that is called exception. And then here is the zero division error. And uh, somewhere uh, is the file not found error as well. Okay, So the ones that uh, we noticed. These are all the exception styles that Python itself would raise in certain cases. When we say except some type of exception, we say any that exception of or any in other exception in that same tree. So because we said file not found error, it will only catch file not found error. If we were said OS error, it would catch any of these errors. 
okay? Any of these exceptions, doesn't matter. If we say exception, it would catch any of these exceptions. So basically any exceptions. There are a few other things which are outside of this exception, but they are, um, it's, uh, they are not uh, something that you would normally catch, okay? So this is, for example, when someone presses control C, this is also, you could catch it in your program and then uh, tell the user, okay, you press control C, but I won't exit anyway. Uh, don't, don't do that, okay, forget that. So basically for most of our purposes, the highest level of exception is called exception. And then everything is beneath it. So if I'm expecting some kind of, if I don't know what kind of expect, exceptions to expect, then I could say, okay, any exception, I will handle this way, okay? So uh, what if what if the divide by zero is included in the exception? Which arrow will it show me? Is uh, it defined by the, the order? By it, zero, where is it now? It's in the expect, exception. Here, yeah. Yeah. So it, it is inside the arithmetic errors, it's inside the exception, right? Yeah. So it will show me both of them or just the first no. one? No, it will only show one. So it will, before, if you run this program, you will see that it only shows uh, the one that, that handled it and then the rest is not, not relevant anymore. Okay. Okay. Now what, what could, could we, what we could do if we didn't encounter all the other exceptions, we could actually have handle it this way as well. So in this way, what we have is it says there was some other exception. There was some other exception, okay? Uh, now, we don't really need to all the details, especially, I mean, it's nice if you can have a very specific error message for each type of an error, okay? It's usually useful, but um, it's not necessary. You could just say, okay, something broke, okay, go on. Um, I could even go with this, say S-E-R-R, -R, okay? So this way, uh, the exception itself, so the, the representation of the exception, is we call an exception object, is placed in this variable called ERR. You could, of course, call it kukuriku if that's what you like, okay? Many examples would show just the letter E. I prefer more than one letter, so I use the ERR. And then I, let's say, print it out, ERR. Okay, but I need a F, letter F here. So let's see what happens now. It says there was a, a, some ex other exception and it, it gives me the text of the exception itself or the division by zero, okay? So this way, this is sort of the easiest way saying, okay, if there is any type of exception, just catch it and then print out that there was some exception and go to the next item, okay? This is sort of the most, the simplest one. Of course, it doesn't give us the, as it is, the possibility to handle different types of exceptions in different ways, like we had in this, this, this break, okay? Um, I don't know. So it, 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 at the end, you will have to decide what to do in the different types of exceptions. Maybe in one case, you say, stop the whole processing. In the other case, you say, continue with this processing. In the third case, you would say, oh, try again. Okay, you were trying to do something and say, okay, there was an exception. Let's say you um, write a program that will uh, download some data from a, from a machine. Okay, there's an experiment, the machine does some experiment and your program has to uh, talk to this machine. Okay, um, and then sometimes the, it, it can't talk to the machine and there is an exception. And then you say, okay, let's try it three times. Okay, so if I get exceptions once, do it again. Second time, do it again. Third time, give it up. Okay, so you could, you could, you might get to this point and, and then you can implement this uh, in a nice way here. Okay, so these were the various ways. There are a couple of other ways actually to decide which exception to handle and which exception not to handle and so on. One thing to warn you is the order. So if I put this order this way, 
then it will till, still do this one for every uh, exception. It even actually it shows you, you can see that this is not highlighted now, this, because it tells you basically this, this can never happen. Apparently, the editor already understands that this exception will catch all the exceptions and this won't, will never happen. That's nice, actually. Code is unreachable, it says. Okay? And, and why is it unreachable? Because Python, this, this try except, goes from top to bottom and it tries to match the exception. And if one of the exceptions matches, then that's it. We are done. So you have to put first the more specific ones and later the less specific ones. Okay? I'll remove this because that's just a bad example. Any questions here? Okay. Uh, git status. Status. This ST is just a shorthand for me. Uh, I configured it. Git add mylib and process text files. Okay, what else was in the plan? Okay, so I, I put this in the readme. That was the basically the first hour and a little bit more. Uh, we had some exception handling. The next thing is I wanted to show you how we can handle various specific files. So we saw even in this example, how we open, we open the file with this open function that doesn't actually read the content of the file. So remind, a reminder, this is not the same as the open here. Okay, I can't even click on it. Some for doesn't matter. Okay, so it's not like the open in Office or one of these programs because those open those. Where when you say open there, it actually involves the reading of the content. And here the open doesn't. But what, what can we do? And, and we, can, we do this with very simple text bear or generic files or very, sorry. We do this with simple text files that are somehow specific to our, our situation. If our file is something like a generic, has a generic format, then Python will pro well, then we, you will have we will probably have a library you will probably be able to find a library a Python extension that knows how to deal with that file and this is what we have in the plan so there are a couple of these files the CSV okay actually the CSV the YAML the JSON and the INI file in this case are all text files okay they are different uh, file formats. So a CSV file, let me show you. This is, the, there I have a CSV file and you probably are familiar with. This is how a CSV file, it's a comma separated values. That's why it's called CSV. So you have these ro a row, which is the title usually. And then the, it has three fields, the three, the names of the three columns. And then each row has three values separated with a comma, as you can see. It has like nice color also. That's the uh, editor ap apparently gives me these colors. Okay, so you can see the various fields. The, I mean, I mean, and I'm using the word column even though it looks like really, really strange. It's like, but it still is the second field in every row. So you can think about it as columns. This is very similar to basically an Excel file, except that in the Excel they are. They look like nicely arranged, okay? When you when you look at in in the Excel uh, program it, itself, okay? Uh, but behind the scene is just the same. It's a it's a table basically where you have uh, rows and and uh, boxes in these uh, or cells in each row, okay? And if it's uh, it and if in every row you have the same amount of cells, then you have a table, a nice table, and you can think about them as columns, even, even, even though they look really, really 
uh, the, the, the shape of this column is really not very strong. Okay, so that would be a CSV file. It's still a text file. Okay, you can still, I can still say here, I can say cat. Okay, that's just the same, the uh, we use type in uh, Windows. And then here planets, and I can see that. Okay, uh, but what if um, I try to find the picture? Okay, work subgub dot com html images oh you will see my my picture okay with glasses without glasses with glasses okay this one okay so this is an image let's see what how it looks like if i run cat this is how the image looks like okay it's a total garbage and i think now i have to close the editor no okay it looks total garbage okay but of course, if I open it with uh, some uh, picture viewer application, okay, so an application that can show you a picture, then you will see a real picture, okay? But behind the scene is just what we call a binary file. So it's totally unreadable for uh, in, in, in like plain text editor or plain text things, okay? And we'll see uh, how we have a library called Pillow in Python uh, that uh, can handle it. Okay, so there are probably many libraries. I think Pillow is one of the commonly used ones. Same with CSV, there is a commonly used library called CSV, surprisingly. For Excel files, Excel files also, if you look at them inside like this with cat, you will see this mess, okay? Because you can't really see the content of an Excel file that way. You need a program that can read Excel files, which is the Excel program, or um, OpenOffice has this, uh, or LibreOffice have the Calc library. Um, both LibreOffice and OpenOffice Open Office have the Calc program, sorry, that can read Excel files or similar, what we call in general spreadsheets. Okay. Um, and there are several Python libraries that can read and write these Excel files. YAML, JSON, and I, INI are all three other, uh, and also there is TOML, which we probably won't look at. Okay, these are the commonly known uh, text files. Let me show you one of the, one of them. So, uh, where is this? Cantonico, Ladino, Dictionary, Theta, Words, Casa. Okay, I like this one, okay? So I don't know if I mentioned, I, I work on a Ladino language dictionary and website and whatever, I really love it. Um, and um, and um, it's called Cantonico, that's why this project. And each word in Ladino is described in a file which is called a YAML, which in the format of YAML. I can use this kit to look at the content of it. Okay, and it looks like this, okay? So it has a field value, field value, field, and a list of values here. For example, there is a, the, the translation of this word in English, you have two translations. In French, well, I have one translation in the library. Uh, in Hebrew, there is one and it's written, uh, it's shown here in the viewer incorrectly uh, from left to right. Uh, if I actually open this with some editor, let's say the Vim editor, you will see that this one, oh, oh. It's also wrong. Why? Wait a second. Let me, let me open it here. Casa, Ladino, dictionary, data, words, casa. Interesting. You see, I opened it with the editor inside here, and it showed me, uh, for those who learn, know how to spell Hebrew, uh, it's, it shows the words from sort of left to right, okay, Batim. Uh, here it's correct, by it and uh, Batim, okay? So <laughs> that's interesting. Anyway, uh, at the end, in the file, it's, it's, it's written in some order, and then, the program has to understand that now it has to show the, the letters in the different order or whatever. 
but forget about that. That's not the point. The point is that this is a text file that I can look at it. I can, with a simple text editor like this one, or like the Visual Studio code, I can edit this file. And in, in this file, what, what I have is key value pairs, and then the key and the list of values, and, and that's it, okay? Um, YAML files are very useful uh, for configuration. That's why I'm using it. Uh, I actually have a couple of people, Ladino speakers, who uh, update these files uh, through GitHub, okay? They are, none of them are programmers. Um, and they can update these files. And they don't really have to know anything about programming. They just have to understand a little bit this, the key value pairs and understand a little bit these things, which is very relatively simple. Uh, and then I have a library in Python uh, that can read these YAML files. Uh, when would you use it? For example, I saw people uh, who ran experiments and you don't, in order to run an experiment, um, you have to do some preparations, uh, which can be done manually, or you can write a program to do the, uh, the preparations for yourself. Uh, but for that, those prepar prepar uh, preparations, you need um, some configuration information. Let's say which, uh, I don't know what, uh, which anti antigens you're using, antigens you're using, or which and how much of them. and or which, or which machine you are using, or, or when to do this. And so this is metadata. Uh, and it's a nice if you can configure it in these files, because then you can store these files, let's say, in a version control system, and you have all these copies of these files, so you can have all the history of how you configure uh, your experiment, let's say. Okay, so these are the YAML files. Let me show you one more uh, the YAML file because I'm working on this. Uh, so uh, you notice that there are the, the thumbnails of the YouTube videos or various that I'm generating now with a new program I'm working on. And uh, so here is the thumbnail with part, part 12. Okay. I used to use a different system, so it's only the newer ones. And these are also, you can see YAML files. So I can open it with now this editor. And basically in this file, I describe what of the what is the size of the image, uh, what, what text to write on it, and what is the location of the text, what is the size of the text. Let me enlarge the font. Okay, I can even tell it what is the background color. Okay, that's that horrible orange color. This is the um, hexa code of the color. Okay. So, and if you are, it's unclear what is this color, go to the color, uh, color, color, circle, palette, circle, circle. Okay, I don't know what, what this one, let's say. Uh, something is broken with my search engine. It's not mine. That's okay. So you go to one of these. Many, there are many, and then uh, I hate it when they get these pop-ups. And then you pick some color, and the, the, you can see the, if, if, if the font was bigger, you could see, oh, this is horrible, this Adobe. Maybe this one is going to be better. Yeah, okay. So you pick a color, I allow the cookies, and then you can see here, the hexadecimal representation of that specific color, the num the amount of red, green, and blue in that in that color. So that's how we came by this uh, this code. Doesn't matter, if, okay? Not that important. The important, really important part here is that I create these YAML files and then I wrote a program that can read the YAML files and generate the image. And there I have ton of more features I want to add to this system, but. This is what YAML files are good for. JSON, um, hmm. let me let me see if uh, if I have a JSON file here. 
I don't remember. I think I have big ones. It's not there. Okay, I, I don't have a... Okay, so JSON files look quite similar to YAML files, um, except they are data structures. Actually, JSON files look very similar to Python data structures, like uh, curly braces and square brackets and all these uh, things and, and quotes. So uh, they can provide us the same features, basically, key value pairs and list of values. That's basically there is. And um, they are much less user readable. So uh, normal per people uh, will find it much more difficult to read and edit JSON files, but uh, they are easier to handle programmatically. So they are used for uh, storing data um, and retrieving data by programs. And for that, we have a library called the JSON in Python. Uh, any files, they, they look look like this. So we can have this uh, field name, field, uh, or, yeah, and then key value pairs. So this is a, th these are more simple. Uh, they usually have the INI extension. That's why we call them any files or INI files or configuration files. Uh, and TOML is a relatively new combination of all these things, again, uh, to allow people to create configuration files, basically. Um, and for each one of them, we have a specific library to read. For example, let me actually go to the slides because that's going to be easier, maybe. Uh, Code Maven slides, Python, YAML, I guess. Yeah, so... Here is an example. That's another example of a YAML file. Field, uh, the here field value, field value, whatever. Field, list of values. And how do I uh, read it? I have to install the library called YAML, okay? And then I say, so I need to install it. And then I, uh, let, let, me, let me take this, okay? Let me use this one. Copy, works, lights, Python, not sides, slides, Python, examples, and it's YAML, data, YAML. Okay, so I, I copied this file. This is the file, get data. Okay, this is the same file that you saw on the, uh, on the slide. And then let me also copy the read YAML program. It's called read YAML. I am also going to copy it. Let's open it. Read YAML. Okay. So can I run this now? Python read YAML. And yeah, it works because apparently I already have this installed, but I... In order to install it, I need to probably write pip install yaml. Okay, let me see in the slide if I have it's called pyaml. Okay, this is called this is the library. So probably I had to install pyaml. Pyaml. Okay, and it says it's already installed, uh, but that's what that's what you you need to install. So let me put this here as a command pip install pyaml, so you will have this, and we import the module, we get the file name here, of course, this might come from the user on the command line, doesn't really matter for now, we just have it here, it's easier. We open the file, that's just the same way we opened it earlier, so nothing for so far, okay? Uh, the YAML module, the YAML library, doesn't itself open the file. What it has, it gets, it gets the file handler, okay, and it also gets um, um, another parameter. I think the reason I have to provide this parameter because because uh, originally they created some other way to read the log files, and then they found it out that it's broken and long story. So you we have to provide this second part of the 
second uh, parameter to the function. But this is the most interesting part that we open the file. So we basically connect to the file that doesn't, that didn't read from the file yet. Okay. So the file is still on the disk. And then when we call this load function, that will read the file, the content of the file, uh, parse it, and convert it into a Python data structure. So this is a Python data structure. It's a dictionary. And then in the dictionary, somewhere there is a list here. Okay, you can see there is a list. Okay, so you, we can access now because we know that the, the, it has a field called course. We can say, actually, let me check it again. So it has a field called modules. Let's print that out. Print data modules. And uh, let me comment out this one so we won't get confused. OK. OK, so now it, it printed out just the list. And I can do, I could, could go over then now. Print for module in this one. Print module. OK, so again, I comment this out. So what now I have, I'm going over the elements of that list. So you can see each row is, is uh, one list. Now, I guess this is, this was actually an old project. I participated uh, still with the Ladino thing, but then it, then it was, uh, it was a, an open source project that was uh, actually similar to Duolingo, but I think it didn't, didn't really take off. So. I stopped, stopped contributing the, the Ladino part and I created my own own website. And if you really want to know, it's called Cantonico. And uh, that's where you can uh, learn Ladino if you or practice or just translate or whatever. Okay. And Mazal, especially for a student who is called also Mazal, uh, this is the word in Ladino for luck, as you might have guessed. Okay, so um, anyway, this is how you read YAML files. Okay, uh, and the same, basically the same idea with all the all the others. Maybe we'll have uh, the luck uh, with others. What uh, was interesting actually is that in this case, load something with YAML, right? read YAML file. Uh, the function name was called load. And in other, pro other libraries, the name of this function is different. Okay, now maybe it's logical for you to call it load. I guess it is was logical for the author. Uh, but different libraries have different words. And it can be confusing to us that why is in that generally the same idea it called uh, different. So let's try to read the CSV file. Okay. Uh, so we have this CSV file, cat planets, okay? And we would like to read it. So uh, import, import CSV. And let's go, let's save it as read planets by, where is the file name? I can't see it. Read planets. Planets.py. Okay, let's see this one. Python read. Where did I put this file now? Sorry, git status. Oh, the read planets is in the upper directory, so I need to move it read planets here. I don't use git move because this file is not tracked by untracked files, okay? So git doesn't know about them yet. So I don't need to tell git that I'm moving because it, git doesn't know about it yet. Okay. Python read planets. Okay, apparently also the CSV library is installed. I think actually, Python CSV, I think actually this is a standard library. Oi, dog, dog, go, please. 
don't crash on me google okay yes so this this is you can i, I know it because it's in the documentation of docspython.org so it means that it comes with python uh, uh, so this library is is there all the time and then i can it even has the example so let's let's open it let's copy the paste copy paste so this is how i guess i would take the example and uh, copy paste now of course i have file name and it's called planet csv so here i have planet i don't know no file name sorry file name um i don't know what is this new line thingy so uh, let's get rid of it scsv file so okay here i mean i used fh usually right uh the name doesn't really matter they use csv file here so let's keep it that way and then we use the csv reader uh, and i think that i have to put here so what is the delimiter the delimiter is uh, is the thing that splits them i think a uh, part so in by its name it's called csv comma separated values but in reality sometimes the fields are separated by a space or a semicolon or a vertical line a pipeline so i think uh, and and the library allows us i think this is a, a comma here and this one i don't know so this sets up the csv reader so this the first line opens the file still not read anything this one sets up a reader uh, based on that file handler with various parameters it has some defaults but you can configure them so here is the it's not spam it's read it's planet reader planet planet reader okay and so now i read the planet reader planet reader and i print out well let's print out it as it is okay so it printed out the same csv file but in order to show you that it's not that i'm not uh, uh, i don't know what let me just print out the first column so row zero okay so uh, this way we are reading in the lines of the csv file one by one okay for loop the planet reader reads the csv file if we won't read the whole csv file at once and then for each row in the csv file we get this variable row and it will be replaced by the next row in the next iteration and then as a list we can access element zero element one element two in this case because there are three columns okay i stop for a second and i let you and drink a little bit and let you ask questions or digest or whatever okay so um i think actually if i remove this it will still work let me check yeah it still works because this is the default okay uh, the delimiter the comma as the delimiter that's the default but i mean obviously i don't know any of this really uh I have to read the documentation every time because no one no one remembers all this stuff. There are like five hundred thousand libraries, uh, and if you don't use something frequently, you don't remember. And if you use it frequently, then you don't remember either. But uh, 
the point is that most of these libraries, most of these things have uh, documentation or and they have various examples around the internet that you can copy paste and then start from there and uh, try to figure out. Uh, one thing that's really bothering me with the CSV file is that it printed out the first row just as if it was printing out all the rest. And that's not really right because the first row is the it is contains the title of the columns and the rest is only the data. So we would like to be able to uh, read it in a way uh, that separates them. So one way to do this, okay, is uh, is doing this, okay. So one way, let me put it aside. And here is one thing I could do. I could see, uh, mm, I don't know actually, planet reader. Next. Strange. I don't know why it's not giving me the next, but let's see. Uh, title. So let's let's try this one. Print title. I think it should work. I don't know why it didn't offer me. It doesn't have a next. Okay. Strange. It has a next like this. Slightly ugly, but I think this will work. Except that I, okay, so what happened now? Little bit explanation. This thing, this underscore next is a sort of background function uh, uh, of the reader library of this planet reader that could give me, I think the next row. But what I got here is this output method wrapper, okay? Why? Because I didn't call the function. I only assigned the name to title. So title is now the function. I need to call the function by putting in, in the parentheses. And indeed, this way I got the title in here. And then let me pr print it this way, title. F, and then I allow the rest. Right, right, nice, okay. So what happened? I used this underscore next function to read in the next row. And because I did this on the very first time, once I opened the file and created the planet reader, this was the first row in the file. Which is the title. So this is what when put it, this is what I put in the title variable. And then I could extract the element zero, get the element zero, one, two. I can check whether the length of this list is as I expect, the number of columns, and so on. So this took the first row, which we called next, and then we started using the iterator, the for loop, to go over all the rest. And which of course didn't include the title anymore because that was already processed using this next uh, code. Okay, so that's uh, one way to separate the title row from the rest. But there is an even better way. Dict reader. Okay. This is the example I'm using, looking for. Okay. I, I actually, this uh, only this part I need. The other, the rest is the same. So let me copy paste this whole thing again. I only need this one. Uh, this is the planet reader for row in the planet reader, row, okay. 
So I'm commenting out the old one. And now I'm going to say this not first name, it's planet name. Let's see if it works. Nice. So what happened? Uh, the first one, what I what we did earlier was reading the CSV file row by row, giving us a list of all the elements in that row. A list, <clears throat> just as we learned earlier. The dict reader is reading also line by line or row by row, but for each row, it will create a little dictionary where the fields are the values from the first row and the values are from the current row. Uh, so uh, if I just print out the row for planet print row, you will see that each one is a little dictionary. Key value, key value, key value. It didn't print out anything for the first, very first row, because that was the title. So it understood that the first was, first row is the title, okay? Behind the scene, it dealt with it. And then for each iteration, it read one from the data rows and built a little dictionary where it took from the top line, it took the key and from the current line, it took the value. So we have these little dictionaries. And then I can write things like this, planet name. Of course, I have to know what is the what are the names of the columns? So what was in the first row in that file? And if I use something incorrectly, then it will say, we don't have that field. But this is, and here is, this is the distance AU. So this is the other one, row. And then the next, next second one is row and it's called distance. And I have to type in this whole thing. Okay, so you can see the name of the planet and the distance in astronomical units and the mass then that we didn't print here. So there are, there are several ways of reading a CSV file and you will probably deal quite a lot with CSV files because uh, most of the, your data is coming either as an Excel file or as a CSV file. Um, so this is how we can deal with CSV files. Any questions before we go on a break? Okay, so, so let's have a 10 minutes break again. See you in 10 minutes. <laughs> 